Hey guys, what's going on? James here with another video. I know it's been a while, but this week, this week, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, and Friday, uh, I think we used to do videos as well, uh, we are doing a full barrage of content um, because I've finally given up the ghost um, of trying to plow through uh, this book as a reread. Um, I'm actually, I think I'm done uh, with the rereading thing for a little while. Um, it's really been dragging me down uh, reading wise. Um, not because I don't like the books that I'm rereading, but just because, you know, I'm kind of hungry right now for new stuff. Um, so we're going to get some new uh, content coming out. <laughs> We're going to get some new books being read and some new content coming out. Uh, but for now, I'm going to talk to you about this book and uh, the what I consider the truest source of evil in the world uh, right now, which is uh, Scientology. So disclaimer, if you're a Scientologist, I don't care. You can be offended all you like. You're a, you're a twat. Um, so here we go. We are talking about today uh, the book Beyond Belief. Uh, my harrowing, my secret life inside Scientology, and my harrowing escape. Um, the escape is not as harrowing as that title suggests, but um, pretty bad uh, as far as things go uh, in terms of leaving somewhere. Uh, this is a non-fiction uh, book, obviously. Um, it is a uh, sort of memoir um, autobiography type thing uh, by Jenna Miskovich Hill uh, with Lisa Pulitzer who I just assume did all the heavy lifting on the writing of this because I guess Jenna Miskovich Hill is not a writer on her own um, which is fine whatever you know you don't have to if you're uh, doing a memoir thing it, I think it's not necessary to write it yourself um, and also like whatever Pulitzer's credited on the cover so that's fine it's all fine, it's not a ghostwriter situation. But I really, when it comes to non-fiction books, I think it's really difficult um, and kind of stupid to rate them like five stars or whatever. Um, like it's, it's difficult to rate them on the same scale that you would a fiction book. Um, and for that reason, I'm not really going to um, because I think the more than anything else, you're looking for the information inside. Uh, whether it's an entertaining read or well written is like it's here or there. Um, it obviously it helps with getting through a book, but um, not necessarily that important. Um, as if you are interested in that side of it, like obviously it's it's perfectly well done. It's perfectly functional for what it is. Um, but the real meat of it is just really how horrific and how weird uh, Scientology is. Um, and I think Scientology is a thing um, that a lot of us are probably familiar with in caricature form without really understanding how vile um, it really is. Um, and insidious it is. I mean, the the real thing, like, things that people know about Scientology are possibly like the Tom Cruise uh, shit where he's like jumping on the sofa and going mad, um, which Scientology really hates, by the way. So if you want to share that clip around online, um, it will rankle them still to this day, um, and that's fun. Um, but the uh, like, you know, and other than that, it's like South Park, where you, you know we know about Xenu and the volcano. Um, so let's let's give a, a little. Uh, crash course for people that don't really know what Scientology is. So Scientology is uh, a religion of sorts. Um, it has religious status in the US um, and maybe other places in the world, but I don't think it's spread much outside of America. Um, I know it definitely failed to get religious status in the UK um, because basically uh, their organisation is... Uh, has been involved in a lot of shady shit to get them religious status in America, um, which I might discuss in a little bit. Um, and the reason they do that is for tax benefits and things. Um, but it was started back in the 50s, I think, by this guy called L. Ron Hubbard, who was a science fiction writer, and by all accounts, like, not a very good one. Like, he's kind of like a hack pulp sci-fi guy. Um, 
he basically was like this real crazy dude. Um, he he wrote a self help book uh, way back in the day called Dianetics, um, which basically uh, posited the idea that inside a human being is like a sentient soul um, called a thetan and that soul is like the real you and the body you use is a meat shell uh, but the thetan is immortal um, and his whole idea is that everything that's wrong with you is down to some sort of impurity in the soul and he he made up this like he invented this device uh, called an e-meter which is basically two soup cans that you hold on to and it's attached to like a, a meter like a like it's just some sort of random scale with a needle that flicks back and forward and the idea is that like some guy interrogates you and asks you questions and if you're if you've got some sort of impurity in you it will like the needle will um it will like crash to one side to indicate that you're like sad or uh, evil in some way it's all very vague intentionally so um and then obviously once you've uh done the necessary steps to purify yourself your needle will like it will just like float around um and that's good um and that is basically the goal of scientology its stated goal is to uh basically bring everyone to what they call a state of clear uh, which means indoctrinating everyone into their religion basically um and making them clear so that their needle floats of basically they've got no secrets or evil intentions that's the that's the idea um that's the the promise uh, that's sold to you and the the sort of benefits for members are like you know uh it's supposed to really help you with like any sort of ailment that you have because all ailments are an impurity in the soul so once you're clear like David Miscovich, who is the leader of Scientology, like his his background is that he was like a kid with asthma, and then after he did Scientology, his asthma was cured, which is like, okay, yeah, sure, that's how it works. Um, so that's basically what Scientology is, in a nutshell. Um, it started out life as a weird uh, thing that L. Ron Hubbard invented, and he like escaped to sea on like a ship um because like he he's like he's real nuts and like and into the navy um l ron hubbard was uh so he like started this on a ship in international waters because he was being like investigated for loads of dodgy shit and like he had his wife declared insane and like he really he has like a real distrust of psychologists no kidding um he like he really hates psychology and psychiatry as careers probably because he's like the head of a brainwashing cult and he doesn't like want you to realize that <laughs> by seeing a therapist um so that's like a big thing um so where does this book come in so this little girl on the cover uh, is obviously our uh, protagonist, for want of a better word, uh, Jenna Miscovich Hill. You may notice the name Miscovich uh, there cropped up. Um, David Miscovich uh, is the current head of Scientology. L. Ron Hubbard died uh, in the 80s or the early 90s at some point. Uh, I think it was the 80s. So L. Ron Hubbard died. Um, and in Scientology, you can't actually die uh, because your Thetan is like immortal or whatever. So they like sent out a statement that was like, L. Ron Hubbard has like fucking discarded his meat body because it wasn't any good to him anymore. And he's basically become a fucking energy cloud in space or something so that he can decode more Scientology. Um, all very weird stuff. Uh, so that's what happened to Elrond. He died. Um, and then there was like a power vacuum where David Miscavige, who is like just this guy, um, he took power because he was like Elrond's right hand man or whatever. So he took power. Now he's the head of the church. And he's a creepy fucking guy, um, as we could discuss 
briefly. Hopefully, I won't make this video too long, hopefully, um, going through all this. But it's interesting stuff. Um, so, yeah, Miscavige is now in charge. And this, uh, this little girl is his niece, basically. Um, she was born in the church. Um, and when you're born in the church, you basically uh, don't learn anything outside of the church. Um, if I was to describe how Scientology really is, um, it is basically a dystopian novel, uh, like evil government in microcosm, uh, but in the real world, and it really exists. <laughs> it's so creepy. Um, so the all the kids that are born in Scientology, um, you know, they a lot of people are Scientologists and don't get like real into it, real deep. Um, but the ones that do, uh, for example, uh, this this poor girl <laughs> family, um, they were brought in. Um, the Scientology has this uh, like the the clerical organization, um, sort of the the, the priest equivalent is uh, what's called the Sea Org. Um, it's C organization. Elrond was big on like abbreviations and like, you know, like, I don't know. He was real big on that stuff. So the C org is this thing that you can join, um, which basically means you're a real hardcore Scientologist. Um, so this girl's parents, along with obviously David Miscavige, um, they joined the C org and uh, they raised their daughter as a Sea Org, like, cadet. Um, so basically, from the time she was about six, um, she, like, never, ever saw her parents. Because um, Scientology is this re has this real weird um, set of rules uh, called the Dynamics. And basically, I think there are five or six. There's There's a certain number of Dynamics. And the... The real basis of Scientology is like it's ultimate rationalism. So um, you have to fulfill the most number of uh, dynamics in order to make the best decision. Um, so here, here are the dynamics. There are eight dynamics. Number one is the self. Uh, family, children and sex is number two. Uh, group, mankind, plants and animals. Uh, M-E-S-T, which is a uh, abbreviation for matter, energy, space, and time, which is basically about the physical universe, uh, the spirit, and God or the supreme being. Uh, that is the, those are the eight. Um, so basically, they're not all treated equally. Um, for example, if you wanted to stay at home and look after your children, um, because that's something you wanted to do, you are only fulfilling uh, desires for number two, um, and number one. Uh, so you're only doing two dynamics and that means you're a bad Scientologist for wanting to raise your kids. So basically her parents just had to work all the time. Like there's all this shit about like they do crazy 18 hour shifts and they're only allowed to see their kids like once every week or something. And then like shortly after David Miscavige takes over, he made a new rule where no one in the Sea Org was allowed to have children anymore. Um, so, so, you know, that already is a big red flag. Um, so what happens then? So her, the, their kid gets sent to this ranch in the middle of, um, like in California, um, where basically they're raised uh, on their own. So there's a few adults running around this ranch, but for the most part, it's like little kids and slightly older kids um, that are all being fed into this Sea Org um, sort of group. Uh, this involves a lot of manual labor, um, hardcore, like running around, hauling railway spikes, uh, you know, digging massive concrete, like, ditches, uh, all of this fucking horrible shit that kids should not be doing. Uh, there's a story in here where Jenna Miscavige is put in charge of being, like, the first aider for the ranch, um, and that meant any time anyone got sick, um, she had to, like, figure out why they were sick, um, and they, like, she had to give them medicine... Uh, but she's like seven, so 
she basically just was like, oh, you've got a fever. Well, here, put this plaster on your head. Because <laughs> she doesn't know about medicine. She's a small girl. Um, and there's like, you know, they had L. Ron Hubbard invented this weird drink. Uh, that was like just some fucking horrible uh, vitamin shit and it was like had loads of magnesium powder in and she's just like drink this <laughs> that'll help um, you know and that is basically what uh, like it's it's pretty much textbook child abuse going on uh, here you know um, there's all sorts of weird shit about her life being brought up um, you know her brother was caught like making out with a girl and then for the next two weeks there was this like inquisitor person who flew down who was like a high up Scientology person and like fucking interrogating children with these soup cans and was like have you ever flirted with anyone have you ever done a blowjob <laughs> They're like eight to ten uh, <laughs> years old. And it's like, holy shit. This is like some real like Big Brother style shit, man. Um, and then you learn just all this other horrific shit. Like the, the main thrust of Scientology, like what they get out of doing this, um, is they make people pay to go on these really expensive courses um, that are supposed to enlighten them and bring them closer to, um, you know, being the true pure being um and obviously as part of this as part of the sea org you you have to do these courses but you do them for free because you're like giving up your fucking soul um and that's another thing when you join the sea org you sign a contract that says um you are contracted to scientology for five billion years um and when you die you get a 20 year leave of absence to find a new body and rejoin Scientology. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, so at some point, I'm really fingers crossed uh, that Miskovich uh, like loses grip and like some power struggle happens inside Scientology where they're propping up like a false reincarnation of L. Ron Hubbard. That'd be the best. That would make the best uh, news ever. Um, so yeah, that happens, and she has to do all these courses, and basically the courses are designed to brainwash you into like believing Scientology, uh, like full, full on believing it. Um, there is like right at the start, you're taught um, that if you learn things about Scientology out of the presented order. Um, then it will kill you. <laughs> like, all this stuff that we know about Xenu and the volcano and shit, that's like level 8 Scientology knowledge uh, that you're not allowed to know until you've got to level 8. Uh, and the purpose behind that, if you haven't worked it out for yourself already, is by the time you've spent that much money and become that invested, like, you'll notice it's ridiculous, probably, but... It's too late for you then. You're in it. If you've not heard it and you've gotten all this way in, you've dedicated your whole life to this shit, and then you find that out, you're probably just going to have to go with it. Um, it's real weird. Um, yeah, it's real weird. Um, but, you know, the early stages are real uh, brainwashing techniques because like when they're in school they don't do normal school lessons um, what they do is they learn words and they like they read these really complicated fucking mental ram ramblings by that were L. Ron Hubbard wrote um, that were basically just his views on the world and how it should work um, and they read that and if they don't understand any of the words in it because they're seven, uh, they have to sit there, get a dictionary, find the word they didn't understand, learn the definition, learn all of the synonyms, the definitions for all the synonyms, all of the alternate definitions, all of that, they need to learn all of that, and then they can move on to reading it again. And, the, and if you, like, question something, like, down the road, or if you fail a test, then they're like, well, you didn't understand a word. So then you have to like tediously do all this shit again. And it, it just takes away that like critical thinking because you're just learning rote what these things are and what it means. Um, 
without really understanding the context behind any of it because you you don't get taught it you just read it um until you can say it back basically um which is fucked up um and then they like do shit like make you sit in a chair and you're not allowed to move or twitch or l break eye contact with someone for upwards of an hour um and if you do you have to start the hour again this like basically it is physical torture and mind control <laughs> of like not magic mind control but like you're brainwashing people into just like accepting what Elrond says because that's all you're ever taught and you know if you question it you'll get really badly punished um they have this thing called the uh the rpf i think it is like all of the the different abbreviations really get muddled up because they're all like you got rtc rpf like they're all kind of the same three letter format so it gets a bit confusing um but if you like do something really bad like uh jenna's mum has an affair and then she gets put into the rpf which means she's not allowed to see her family, speak to her family, speak to anyone else in, uh, in Scientology. Um, she has to run everywhere she goes. She has to wear all black clothes um, and basically just do manual labour for upwards of two years whilst being uh, re-educated in Scientology. Re-educated. So that's, you know, I mean, I'm really just scratching the surface with all this, but you can see how this is fucked up, right? I'm I'm not mad. This is fucked up. Um, fortunately, guys, it's a happy ending. Uh, there is a harrowing escape involved, um, but Jenna does eventually break free of Scientology, and uh, you know now lives a relatively normal life uh, with her husband, and she's got kids and stuff. Um, the problem is with Scientology, and this is another thing that people probably may have heard about, um, once you're, once you're out and you're speaking against them, they, like, label you a suppressive person, which means you can't talk to anyone still inside Scientology, you can't, like, they can't talk to you, so, like, people that have left the church just completely shunned by their family now, no contact with their kids or anything that's still in there, none of that. Um, you know, they're basically outcasts, and uh, Scientology, because it's this massive fucking organization, will hire people to harass you. Um, you know, they'll send people to follow you and all this shit. Um, it's pretty crazy stuff, um, and a lot of people I think now are sort of getting wise to Scientology, and I think like. They keep saying their membership is growing, but I think that is a lie. Uh, I'm under the understanding that Scientology's numbers are dropping now, um, or at least it's not growing nearly as fast as they say. Uh, which is good, because it's kind of just a weird cult um, where people have to clap and chant hip hip hooray at pictures of a science fiction writer from the 50s that wasn't very good. Um, you know when you read a lot of this stuff it it just brings to life like how scarily close we could be to a real dystopian universe and how uh twisted some people can really be um Elron Hubbard was a science fiction writer all of his and he like I think there's a quote that is attributed to him that says if you want to get rich start a religion which is you know, pretty damning evidence that none of this is real. Um, but, I mean, when you read about some of the things that they learn um, and are taught, like, there's a whole course about how to control people with a certain tone of voice, uh, which is basically ripped straight from Dune. Um, so it makes me feel like Elrond wasn't a very good sci-fi writer and built his religion off the back of other good sci-fi writer stuff and he just tricked people into thinking it was real somehow. Um, it's real shocking stuff, guys. And this is the book I've been reading for fucking, like, over a month. I didn't finish it a second time. I got up to the halfway point and I bowed out. Um, I remember a lot of the stuff from it anyway. Um... And it's just, it was real, it's real hard uh, going through a second time just because 
it's fucked up. Um, and I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, as I said at the start, I'm just hungry for new uh, stuff at this point. Uh, putting rereading on hold uh, for the foreseeable future. But that was really it. I mean, I guess I just needed to do this video because this book has been consuming my life for a long time now. Um, and I think if I didn't talk about it, you can see this video is already 25 minutes long. I mean, if I didn't talk about it, I think my time would have been wasted and it's kind of fun to rant about how fucked up Scientology is. Um, so if you have never heard of Scientology before and this is your introduction, well, uh, you know, welcome to being horrified by that. Uh, I do recommend, if you want to, to check out some uh, documentaries um, about Scientology. Maybe just look up some YouTube videos about it because it is really fascinating stuff. Um, but at the same time, a horrible, uh, fucked up dystopian universe right on America's doorstep. They basically own most of uh, Clearwater in Florida, guys. They own the whole town. Even the police. Have fun with that. And I will see you on Wednesday for something different. <laughs> Goodbye.